Hey everyone and welcome back to the breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a paper server in Minecraft 1.16.3. Paper is the only way in my opinion you should make a Minecraft server because it is optimized for performance meaning it's going to reduce your lag a ton and on top of that it is also going to allow you to get plugins. So not only is it going to make Minecraft servers run better, it's also going to make your Minecraft server be able to have plugins on it and add things like MCMO, World Edit, all those cool features to your Minecraft server and really any plugin you want as long as it's updated to 1.16.3 which most of the popular ones are, can be added to a paper server while, again, increasing performance. It is the overall package and the best way to get a server. Now, one thing I will say, though, is the server we're starting today, the paper server we're starting today, is not 24 hours. It is only up and running when your computer's up and running. It is also going to take a bit of decent hardware. While it's not going to be as hardware intensive as like a vanilla Minecraft server or a modded Forge Minecraft server, it is still going to take some hardware on your computer to run it, and a lot of computers can't run paper servers efficiently. On top of that, it's also meant for your friends, your family, people you trust. The reason for that is it's hosted on your own IP address, meaning that anyone who gets this IP address can hit you offline via a DDoS attack or even figure out where you lived under your latitude and lat longitude coordinates using the IP address that you're going to be getting from the server in this video. So with all that being said, what do you do if you want a 24-hour server? Or you want anyone and everyone to be able to join and not have to worry about, you know, like your own privacy or DDoS or anything like that. Or what if your computer's hardware just isn't that good and you still want to be able to run a server? Well, that's where Apex Minecraft hosting comes in. You can check out Apex at the first link down below. The breakdown.xyz slash Apex. You get an incredible 24-hour DDoS directed Minecraft server for you and your friends. We actually love Apex so much that we put our money where our mouth is and host our own server, playdarbreakdowncraft.com on Apex Minecraft hosting. Everything on playdarbreakdowncraft.com is natively running on Apex. They really are incredible incredible with 24 hours, 7 day a week support, and port forwarding, which you have to do in this video. You don't have to do it with Apex. And on top of that, I have one click setup. Yes, whenever you're setting up your server, just click on paper as your server file there, and you'll be able to launch your server with just one click. It's super, super easy. And let's say down the road you want to update your server. That's also done with one click. Let's say down the road you say, yeah, I'm done with this current server. I want to start a brand new server on Forge running mods. You can do that all that is very, very easy to do on Apex. They support over 100 mod packs. So go check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown. XYZ slash Apex to get a 24-hour server, to get a server that's not hosted on your own computer's hardware, and they can be joined by anybody and everybody. Let Apex take care of the server. All you need to do is get your plugin set up and run it simple as that. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and get paper set up, assuming you don't want it to be up all the time, and you're okay with it just being with your friends and family. Let's go ahead and do this. Now, the first thing you want to do is go to the second link down below. That's going to take you here. This is the official paper download page, and once you're here, it should say paper 1.16.3 automatically selected, but if not, just click on it there, and then come down under the build here and click on the top one. Now, that's probably going to be a different build number for me, for you versus what it is for me. As you can see, they update quite often over here, so don't be intimidated by that. You want the most recent build here. Click on that and it will download in the bottom left. Now you will need to keep this file because it's a jar file and all jar files need to be kept, but it is 100% safe to keep it on Google Chrome or save it in the center of your screen on Mozilla Firefox. Now we go ahead and minimize my browser. Here on the desktop we do have paper 214. Now yours is probably going to be paper 3078. Doesn't matter what that number is after it says paper. As long as it does say paper, you are good to go. Now let's go ahead and right click on our desktop, create a new folder. You can title this folder whatever. I'm going to title it play.breakdowncraft.com. Why is that? Because that is our own incredible Minecraft server, all of which are hosted on paper. We've got survival, skyblock factions, you'll love it. Come play with us. Over 150 players online every single day, so playdarbreakdowncraft.com is the IP. But nevertheless, once you've got that folder created, take the paper file you downloaded and drag and drop it into that folder. Then go ahead and double click and open up your folder here. And then once you're in this folder, you want to go ahead and if you want to see .jar here, which I would kind of recommend you do be able to see the .jar there, what you want to do is click on view and then click on file name extensions. For example, if yours says like this, paper 214 or paper whatever number, if you want to be able to see dot jar at the end, which again, I would recommend you do see that, click on view here and then click on the file name extensions. Again, at the top, click on view and click on file name extensions and then it will look like mine and you'll be able to see those like dot jar at the end of it and all that stuff right like that. So boom, there is that. But nevertheless, once you've got this here, you want to actually right click on this jar file, click on rename and then name it paper. Now again, mine says paper dot jar. If you didn't do that file name extensions there, yours will just say paper. But nevertheless, paper dot jar there. Then once we've got that, we can go ahead and right click and then create a new text to document. Now you can leave this title new text document, then just go ahead and open it up. Then in your new text document, you want to go to the description down below and find these codes. This is the amount of RAM you want to run your server with. Now we've got one, two, three, and four gigabytes. I'm going to be recommending two gigabytes here for most people on like smaller servers. That's what I'm going to be using. You might need four gigabytes depending on how many players and plugins you're going to have on your server. But again, since this is just for your friends and family, I'm guessing it's not going to be too many and two gigabytes should be fine. 
Then we can go ahead and paste that in the new text document. Again, these codes are in the description down below. Then you want to do File, Save As. And then you want to make sure you're saving it in the uh, file here with the new text document. You should be automatically. And then title this file run.bat. So file name is run.bat. And then save type as is all files. So file name run.bat, save type as all files, and then click save. Now if you close out of this notepad document, you can come here and you'll see run.bat. Awesome. That's what we want. Now if you didn't turn on file name extensions, it's just going to say run. It's not going to say run.bat. Now once you have your run.bat file, go ahead and double click on it and it will go ahead and download and start to do some things to get your server set up. You can see some stuff is you know showing up here, but it's going to fail eventually. And that's because we need to agree to the Minecraft EULA. It might take it a second, but I promise you it is going to fail. This is not going to work on your first shot. Boom, there we go. Failed to load EULA.txt. Awesome. So we can go ahead and press any key to continue. It's going to close out of that little command prompt. And then we have the EULA.txt file. So go ahead and double click on that. And then once you're here, you want to go to this link. And as long as you agree to the ULA, you want to come in here to the bottom and change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Then go ahead and do file, save, right like so. You can close out of the EULA.txt, again, assuming it's EULA equals true. Close out of the EULA.txt and then double click on the run.bat file. Now your server will start up. Because of like my own computer resources and the fact I'm running a server and recording and all that, I'm actually going to do a jump cut here and I will see once the server is started. Once your server is started up, you will see this at the end there. It will say done right there. And then, uh, yeah, basically that's it. Your server is now set up. But only you can join it. Your friends can't join your server at this point. But if let's just say you wanted a server to test plugins, you can do that. I mean, right there is plugins. We have an in-depth video on installing plugins in the description down below and a link to the end of this video. It's probably also at the eye at the top of your screen. But nevertheless, that is there, right? If you want to learn how to install plugins, you can do that. And you can test those plugins and everything like that for just you. But if you want friends, you want other people to be able to join this server, you will have to port forward. We're going to get into that to a second. But what if you do just want to join this server? Let me show you how to do it. We're going to go ahead and leave the server up. And then we're going to go over here to the top left of my screen, bottom left of your screen. Click on that little one icon in the top or bottom of your screen. And then go ahead and type in CMD. And then have command prompt here. And then go ahead and open up command prompt right like so. And in command prompt, type IPCONFIG. IP config, all one word, exactly like that. IP C O N F I G and hit enter. Then you'll have a few numbers here. I'm going to open up Notepad just so we can remember these later on. So our IPv4 address is one of the numbers we're going to need here. So for me, that's IPv4, and that is going to be 192.168.1.123. Yours is probably completely different, but that's okay because, uh, well, that's why we're getting it this way, because yours is going to be different from what mine is. Then your default gateway, right, is the next number we need. And for me, I just have numbers. Now, if you have one that's numbers and letters, look under that, and there's probably just a number on the next line, right? Whatever you do, you want to get the one that's just numbers. That's the default gateway you want. Once you find it, go ahead and type it in here into Notepad. That way we can have it later. Now, you won't need your default gateway unless you're going to port forward. But since we're here, we're going to go ahead and get it for those of you that want to. And if you don't want to, well, then that's okay. You still have it. Now, we go ahead and close out a command prompt and we're going to open up Minecraft. Why are we doing that? Because I want to show you that you can join your server for testing reasons at this point, right? The basically test server is up. It's not public or it's not meant to be, it's not ready for your friends to join it, but it is up. So let's go ahead and later release 1.16.3, do a quick jump cut and I'll see you once we're on the Minecraft main menu. So here we are in Minecraft. Now to join this server, what you want to do is go ahead and click on multiplayer and then click on direct connect here. So multiplayer, direct connect, and then you want to take your IPv4 address from the left hand side and then just paste it in right here where it says I server address. So again, take that IPv4 address from Notepad and paste it right in here into your server address and then click join server. You see us join on in over here on the left hand side. And this is basically just proof that your server is working. It is up and running. It is moving. It is moving. It is working. This is a cool seed. So let me go ahead and grab that for you. It'll show up right over here. For those of you that want it, there it is. But nevertheless, this is pretty cool. Wow, this is actually a really cool seed. Yeah, I might use this later. But nevertheless, really, really cool stuff. And overall, an awesome, awesome server is now set up. You can add plugins to this server. If we do slash VER, we'll be able to see the paper version that this server is running. So we have now set up a paper server. But again, this is just local. It's just for you. It's just for testing. It's just for plugins. It's just for stuff like that. It's not for your friends, your family, or anyone else who you want to join it. It is just for you. So what do you do if you do want other people to join your server? Well, let's go ahead and get into it. To do that, we want to actually disconnect from our server. I'm going to close out of Minecraft. 
I normally wouldn't, by the way. It's just my computer is running on less RAM, so I have to. And then we're going to go ahead and stop command prompt over here. Not command prompt, excuse me. Stop our server console, which is hosted in command prompt, by typing STOP. Always type stop and then hit enter at the last line of your command prompt in order to close things down and get things shut down properly. Because if you don't do that, it uh, can cause some weird stuff. So make sure you always stop your server by typing stop instead of just closing out of it. Now you can press any key to continue. Now what we want to do is find our server.properties file. So right here it is, server.properties. Go ahead and double click on that. And then in this file, we want to find server-ip equals. So if you scroll down, there it is, server-ip equals. Now what we want to do is take our IPv4 address, right? Go ahead and copy that and paste it next to server-ip equals, right like so. Then we want to go ahead and do file, save, and we can close out of server.properties. However, there are some other interesting things that you may want to configure in here. But for, all, for now, all we need to do is add the server-ip equals, right like so. Now let's go ahead and close out of that, and we can minimize or close out of our server folder for now. Now let's go ahead and move on to getting our port forward done. To do that, you want to go ahead and open up your browser, right like so. Then you want to open up a brand spanking new tab, right like this. And then in this new tab, you want to go ahead and copy your default gateway, and then paste right in here your 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 default gateway. Just like right where you would type YouTube.com or the breakdown of XYZ or anything like that, that is where you want to go ahead and paste in the you know default gateway for your router. Then go ahead and hit enter. And a page like this, but most likely completely different from this, will open up. The one thing that'll be similar, this right here. You'll have some sort of a login box. It'll be asking for a username, a password, or some sort. And no, this isn't your Wi-Fi password, unfortunately. It's going to be your router's password. And we have an in-depth tutorial right here linked in the description down below on how to find your router's password. It goes through every single step of finding your router's password. As you can see, there's really and truly each of these are methods, right? And each method could give you the correct result. So normally by method four or method three, people have found their router password and they'll be able to come over here and log in. But this is a pretty in-depth guide. So go through this and you should be good to go. Then let's go ahead, once you found that, and log on into our router, right like so, sign in, boom, and it will take us off to a page that, again, looks most likely completely different from what you're seeing on your screen, but that's okay. We're going to walk you through most of it, and most importantly, we do have an in-depth guide on how to port forward. Specifically, this video right here is going to walk you through steps of port forwarding on all of the popular routers today. Netgear, Asus, Verizon, TP-Link, Linksys, all of those are covered and more in this video. And even if your specific router isn't featured in that video, that's okay, because it's going to have a router like yours, and you're going to pick up all the different terms and all the different lingo and all the different places to look for port forwarding while you're doing that and while you're watching that video. So now let's go ahead and go back over here to our router, right where we've logged in. And for me, port forwarding is in security. For you, it may be in advanced, maybe in advanced advanced. It may be in the admin tab or administration tab, and then advanced. I've seen that before. It could also be in apps and gaming. It could be in security. It could be in port forwarding. It could be in firewall. It could be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It could be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be in NADS gaming, NAT gaming. It could just be in apps and gaming, as I said, or it could just be in single port forwarding. There's so many different ways for it. For me, it is in security, and then it is in apps and gaming. And then it is in single port forwarding. So yes, it is in basically three things. It is in security, and then it is in apps and gaming, and then it is in single port forwarding to finally get here. Now, once you've gotten to where uh, you basically have something like this, where you can either add a new single port forward or add a port forward, or if you have a big list like this, either way, it's fine. If you have a big list like this, just go with the first one and then just, you know, save when you're done. But nevertheless, we have to add one here. And then this application name or ID is going to be Minecraft. So for you, it may be ID. For me, it's application name. And then for anything involving the word port, if it says port at all, P-O-R-T, if it says that word at all, you're going to enter in 25565. So we have external port 25565. That's where we're going to enter. Hey, there's that word port again because it's internal port. So we're going to do 25565. Now for our protocol, we're going to do TCP slash UDP or UDP slash TCP or both. Whichever allows you to select both at the same time, that's what we're going to go with. So for me, it's going to be both. Now if you can't select both at the same time, you TCP slash UDP or UDP slash TCP or by just clicking on both, then what you want to do is do this port forward twice, leave everything the same, just do it once for TCP and once for UDP. However, we can do both here. Now for device IP, this is going to be your IPv4 address that we found earlier. So in my case, 192.168.1.123. Now for you, you may not have a device IP and instead you might have a big drop down list of all the devices connected to your internet. If that's the case, you want to click on the computer that you're starting the server on. So now let's go ahead and click save. Click apply. You're done there. Now for most people, you're done at this point. 
However, some people do need what's called an external or outside IP for their port forward. Most people don't, but some do. However, you're going to need your external IP no matter what for your friends to join your server because that's what they're going to join off of. So let's go ahead and click on the link in the description down below. What's my IP? And that's going to take you here. Now, most of this is blacked out. You can see 100 at the end, and that's all you can see. But you can also see what people can get from your IP address. You can see their country, region, city, latitude, longitude, coordinates, all from your IP. Now, for us, it's blacked out, but you can see what it is there, and that's not what you want everybody to have. So with that, you want to make sure that you only give this to basically anyone you would invite over to your house. If you want to have a public server, that's where Apex Minecraft hosting, first link down below, comes in. But nevertheless, if you do need your public IP address in your portfolio, Forward, come over here and copy and paste it however at this point we can now minimize our browser I'm gonna go ahead and open up our server again so we're gonna go ahead and start our server by double clicking on the run.bat file right like so and I'm gonna open up Minecraft I will see you on the Minecraft main menu all right here we are on the Minecraft main menu now we can go ahead and click on multiplayer again click on direct connect and this time we're gonna paste in our public IP address now again you can only see 100 here at the end that's it 100 everything else is blacked out for you but we can click join server and on the left hand side it will join us on in now we'll see that this is the exact same server we've already joined into the same village same everything it is all here and guess what that means it is working now some of you may not be able to join off of your public ip address that's okay because you can join off of your ipv4 address that we used earlier However, your friends will have to join off of your public IP address. So if your friends can't join off of your public IP, well then that is cause for concern. And most likely, it's an issue with a firewall on your computer or on your router. Or it could also be an antivirus on your computer causing that issue. So lastly, double check your port forward because that might be the problem there. But yeah, that's kind of that. That is how you can set up a paper server in Minecraft 1.16.3. We go over every single step of getting a paper server here. It was great. I loved it, and uh, I think I think I think we can accomplish our mission here. I don't know if we accomplished it, but I think we did. I, I think we did. This is a very large like. Is this two villages smashed together? Very very cool. We can go ahead and op ourselves over here in the console, and I will. Hey, what are you doing? Skeleton going to creative. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and get the seed one more time. A little more visible there in chat for you all. And yeah, that's kind of that. That's how you can set up a paper server. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And come play with us on play.breakdowncraft.com. The best Minecraft server in the multiverse. But anyway, my name is Nick, and I am out. Peace.